Now, my next guest stepped down as Prime Minister in July 2019. And now four years and three Prime Ministers after leaving number 10, Theresa May has written a new book. It's called The Abuse of Power. And it's what she witnessed uh, during her time as Prime Minister. And she joins us now. It is so good to see you. And this book is so refreshing because it's not your usual political memoir about point scoring, making you look in the best possible light. It's not about revenge. It's about the abuse of power. Well, it is. Yes, it's right. all in the title, right? It's all right? in the title. There. Exactly. Yes, and lots of people say to me, well, I assume you've written a memoir. But first of all, I, I, I don't spend a lot of time looking at political memoirs. Um, but I think what's more important is actually the issues that I was dealing with. Yes. And that's what I'm getting at with, with this book, looking at issues like Hillsborough, like Primados, Grenfell, and this thread of the abuse of power which runs through it. And what we can learn from that is, as well, because you've not named and shamed. You could have. You know, you could have spent the whole book talking about Boris Johnson and, and Liz Truss and all of that. And you haven't because you don't, in a way, you don't need to. But what is, is really interesting about this is, well, you had to put up with an awful lot and you, and you did it with great dignity. You know, you, you, you did that and you... The thing about you was you were quite happy if people thought about you as being dull rather than nasty. Do you know what I mean? The, yeah, the quips, it was, you know, you would think about something and say, no, I don't want to say that. Yes, yeah. and it, it's sort of, and one of the things I say in the book is, and f looking back on it, I think this is absolutely correct, is I'm, I was brought in, up in a country vicarage. Yeah. So my father was a local vicar. And I realised at that time that, um, in a sense, I didn't just, wasn't just me. Whatever I did and said, people thought about him and the church. Right. And in a sense, it's the same in politics. Yeah. You are yourself. But actually how you behave, what you mm. say, uh, is a commentary on your party and in international affairs on your country yeah. as well. And that sort of always made me think very carefully before yeah. I said anything. Rather say nothing than say something pretty horrible that might be taken out of context as it is, as it is in these days. You also had to put up with uh, Donald Trump holding your hand. What was all that about today? So that was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. <laughs> it, well, it was pretty bizarre. <laughs> it was like you were on a date or you. something. Yes, oh, yes. geez, no, that was crazy. It was, it was, it was really <laughs> strange because we were, we were sort of walking to, to walk out in front of the world's press. And he said to me, oh, there's a slope round the corner, so take care. Right. And I thought, well, I was, I'd got kitten heels on and yeah, you I, 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 I'm fine on a slope. Um, so I pretty didn't take any notice. And as we were turning the corner, suddenly he grabbed my hand. So I don't know whether he was doing that to support me or whether, uh, or whether he yeah. thought that I might be able to support him going down probably, the slope. Probably, probably the other way. You mentioned your shoes. Now, sometimes there was accusations of you being dull. There is no way that a woman that wears the kind of shoes you wear is in any way dull and it became you sort of trademark look we've got some examples here they're smashing i like them yes makes a statement doesn't it well it does and yeah. i you know i like shoes and there's nothing wrong yeah. it seems to me with being in a position of power like prime minister but liking fashion liking shoes and and you know wanting to think about those uh, about those things no exactly of course there's things that you talk about that you regret that you probably be remembered for for brexit for calling that election but how would you like people and obviously you know the people that have come after you we realize what we had um how would you like people to remember you though as prime minister well i guess i mean i, I the, the issues i'd like people to remember yeah. me for are the work i did as home secretary on modern slavery act and i'm setting up a global commission on modern slavery right. at the moment um and also as prime minister the net zero legislation on climate change which is hugely important for young mm. people today for the the future of the planet. But I, but I hope actually people would say, you know what, she did her best. Yeah. She tried. Yes, and that's all, that's all and, that we and can she, do. She put, what I hope people will say is that I did my best to put people first. Mm. Because I think, um, you know, being Prime Minister, lots of people think it's about power. Actually, you are there to serve the public. It's about service. You say that in the book very clearly. Um, that's not so much the case now. Do you feel that as a politician, you're almost like an endangered species in that you were put another... It's all about service. It's all about duty, if you like, the way, the way it used to be. Yes, and, and I think, I fear that what we're seeing these days in politics is increasingly people for whom it's, if you like, a career move. Um, I, I see more and more people who come into Parliament, not as in the past, willing just to be a good constituency member of parliament right. and have a good career in parliament itself but actually wanting to be a government minister 
mm -hmm. uh, and seeing that that's where they're going to they're going to be going. And actually, being a minister, being an MP, it is all about the public. You are there to serve. Mm. And so, when you're thinking about decisions, when you're thinking about what you're doing, you need to be thinking about the, those people who elected you. When I when I was Prime Minister, I used to still go knocking on doors in my constituency and talk to people. Yeah. And uh, some people just say, why, why are you doing that? And I say, because they're the people who elected me. I'm only in number 10 because I'm a member of parliament. Mm. You should never forget the people who put you there. No, I know, because we, uh, we, I remember you knocked on my door because I, I live in your yes. constituency. And, and that, was, that was like, oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. But that's really important because when you are in that position of, of, of power, which I know you say is about serving people and you're quite right to do so, you can be in a bubble. Yes. So you need to connect, don't you? It's all about connecting with people, finding out exactly from them what they're saying, not from a focus group or anything like that, just directly D what directly people are from people. feeling. It, it's, it, I think it's one of the strengths of our system. And if I may just tell you a story, when I was Home Secretary, I was uh, at a, a, a G6 meeting and I think it was the American Homeland Security Secretary who said to me, because they're appointed to their mm. ministerial positions, said, what's it like being a Home Secretary and a Member of Parliament? And I said, well, today I am sitting here with you discussing counter-terrorism. Tomorrow morning I will open a community vegetable garden. And that's what it's about, it because is. it's about that grassroots. It is. And if you're not talking to people at the grassroots, you don't mm. know what impact your policies are having. You know, you can think all the great thoughts you like in a Westminster bubble. Yeah. Actually, it's mm. down there that matters. What you've got, I think, which is really important, is when at the end of the day, you know, whenever that may be, because I know as Prime Minister your days are elastic, you go home to your husband, who is, I know people talk about people being their rock, but he really is, you know, he, he really is. I, I'm hugely fortunate. He was absolutely my, uh, my rock, yeah. yes. And, uh, and he, was, he was always there for me. Mm. And it's, quite, it's difficult being the spouse of a prime yeah. minister um, because there's a tension on you, but, but actually, you know, you're having to, in a sense, live, particularly if things are going are difficult for your other half, yeah. who's in office, then you're having to sort of live that, but not, not be doing anything to do about it. Right. You just have to be there and support. Mm -hmm. And Philip was absolutely wonderful oh, at doing that. I, I've met him, he's a smashing fella. What did he think about your portrait? Did he like it? He likes it. Does he? Yes. Because I was a bit worried about it. I thought you looked a bit dour and a bit severe. <laughs> oh, actually, no. no, when you see it you see, now. I, I, I like it as well. Yeah. And the artist wanted something that would stand the test of time. Right. And that, that wasn't just of the moment, hmm. in a sense. Yeah, but, I, see, um, I see what you mean. Yeah, I like... It's, it's sort of... Hopefully, it's got a strength to it. It I has think. got a strength to it. And that's the thing about, about the book, too. But I'll tell you what, you, you know what? It's a shame because we need more politicians like you. Of course we do. Now, Ed Balls famously, as you know, went on Strictly. Theresa May, you have danced. And I'm just thinking in my head, it's only me. I'm thinking Strictly Come Dancing with Johannes. With Johannes. He would be amazing. <laughs> Look at you. You'd be fantastic. And the two of you together would be good. Just have that in the back of your mind. Should you need it, is all I'm saying. <laughs> right. I can, I can use this picture. On a bad day, I can think. Just say, I'll think about Johannes. You don't have to do it this year. But just, you know, just keep that thought. <laughs> in the meanwhile, this, this is great. This is a real insight into what it's like. Uh, I, I found it absolutely fascinating and I learned ever such a lot. And it's out just now, the abuse of power, confronting injustice in public life. Thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure, lovely it's to really, see you. really good to see you. Always good to see you. Thank you.